Hello everyone. Welcome back. So, in the last class, we discussed about uh, the importance of uh, sensors and uh, sensing, especially for uh, perception in uh, mobile robotics. We uh, talked about uh, the classification of uh, sensors and uh, try to understand some of the basic characteristics of uh, sensors which are used in uh, mobile robotics for uh, perception. Today, we will uh, try to uh, understand the working principle of some of the commonly used sensors in uh, mobile robotics. Of course, depending on the application, depending on the requirement, uh, we can choose uh, various sensors. So, covering all the sensors may not be possible in this uh, talk, but I will uh, try to explain the basic working principle of uh, some of the very commonly used uh, sensors. So, one of the most commonly used sensors is uh, an encoder. Or, uh, motor encoders are primarily used to get the position of the wheel or the speed at which the wheel is rotating. So, either the position or the, uh, the speed can be measured using the uh, encoders. So, normally the encoders are attached to the wheels in mobile robots. So, that we can uh, identify the RPM of the wheel and then use this RPM uh, to find out the distance traveled by the robot and therefore, to locate the position of the robot. So, normally we can use the wheel movements which can be integrated to get an estimate of the robot's position and the normally we call this as odometry. So, you estimating the position of the robot using uh, uh, the encoders, one is for the position then, then we can use additional information and then get the encoder data. So, commonly used uh, encoders are optical encoders and they are uh, proprioceptive sensors that is they collect the information within the robot and that is why uh, we call them as uh, proprioceptive sensors. And because we are using that, we would not be able to uh, get the actual position estimation because uh, they will be uh, erroneous because if you use it for a long time, then the wheels will actually create, uh, I mean, wheels may slip or there may be some other problem. So, the actual position estimated using the uh, encoder may not be uh, always correct. So, for a short distance uh, travel, we will be able to use this uh, kind of encoders for estimating the position. So, only for short movements, we can actually use it. Uh, the typical resolutions of such encoders are uh, roughly 2000, but we can actually have much more uh, higher also, up to 8000 also it is possible. So, every revolution, uh, one rotation of the wheel can actually be resolved into 2000 uh, pulses. So, you will be able to get a very good uh, uh, measurement of the position of the wheel as well as we can get the RPM also. So, as you can see here in this picture, the principle is uh, very simple. You have a, a light source and a photo detector that is the optical encoder principle and then you have this uh, rotating disc with uh, some kind of a, a, a track which is uh, uh, cut on the disc which will allow the light to pass through and then they pass fall on the photo detector. So, as the disc rotates and the light uh, falls on the uh, detector, you will be able to know so how many pulses are actually there on the uh, receiver. Uh, based on that, you will be able to find out the position as well as the speed of the uh, disc. And uh, this disc is connected to the uh, rotating shaft and therefore, you know how much the shaft has rotated. So, that is the basic principle of operation. So, as you can uh, see here, so there are uh, discs like this. So, you will be able to have a disc like this as you can see here. Uh, so, this disc will be having a lot of uh, uh, cut marks on it and that will allow the light to pass through and the lights will light will fall on the uh, detector and then the detector will actually identify uh, the pulses and then the pulse can be used for measuring the position. So, these are the typical uh, disks which, which are used in the uh, optical encoders. Now, coming to the uh, resolution, so you can see that uh, if you can have only one uh, uh, round like this, one uh, set of uh, disks, you have a limitation and uh, if you want to have large, the increase the uh, resolution, you need to have more number of uh, uh, this uh, uh, 
cut portions. So, to uh, improve the accuracy or the improve the precision of the uh, sorry, improve the resolution of the encoder, we can actually use uh, something called quadrature en encoders. So, the quadrature encoders will be having two uh, uh, detectors. You can see there are two detectors and a light source, and then there will be the coded disk. And uh, by properly having this uh, disk designed, you will be able to get uh, different uh, uh, stages of input uh, to the uh, en detector and that will actually increase the resolution of the uh, encoder. So, if you want to have increase the increased resolution, we can go for this uh, quadrature uh, optical encoder where you will be having two detectors and uh, one light source and you can have a disk in which uh, the, the both the detectors will be getting uh, different uh, uh, inputs for the same position and by uh, resolving this you will be able to get a much better resolution for the uh, encoder. So, this, this one explains it. So, you have uh, uh, A and B are two de uh, uh, detectors and then both will be having different uh, pulses. So, each one will be having a, a different pulse for the same position of the uh, disk. As you can see here, so you have a, a disk, I mean a, a and B are the two detectors and you can see that there will be difference in the, there will be a phase difference between these two pulses and by looking at this, you can actually increase the resolution. So, you can have uh, four states, high, low, high, high, low, high and low, low and then that actually increases the resolution four times. So, that is why these are known as uh, quadrature uh, encoders. So, the resolution actually can be increased uh, uh, four times in this case. So, that is the optical encoder which are very commonly used in uh, mobile robots to find out the position or the uh, speed of the wheel and which will actually help us to get the position of the robots. So, once you know the position, the next one what you are interested in is known as the heading of the uh, robot. So, most of you by now know that the position of the robot is normally given by x y position and the orientation is given by a theta in a normal uh, uh, planar motion. So, x y theta are the uh, primary uh, interest for us. So, x y can actually be uh, obtained by uh, looking at the encoder data, the optical encoder which are attached to the wheels will provide you the uh, estimate of x and y position in the dead reckoning. Now, what we are interested in is knowing the orientation of the robot. So, that is basically we use the heading sensors to know the orientation of the robot. What is the current orientation of the robot can be obtained by using the uh, orient heading sensors. So, they can be either proprioceptive or it can be an extraceptive also. Proprioceptive will look at the internal information and then try to find out what is the orientation. Extraceptive will uh, look at the external uh, 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 references and then find out the orientation. So, both can actually be used. So, gyroscope or inclinometer, these are the commonly used uh, proprioceptive uh, heading sensors and the uh, compass is uh, an extraceptive because it uses the magnetic field uh, information to get the uh, orientation. So, these are the commonly used uh, uh, heading sensors. Okay, so, the orientation and inclination. So, inclination is inclinometer is primarily used for inclination because you can and, and apart from theta which is in the x y plane, but you can have an inclination of the uh, robot when the robot is uh, traveling over the grid or, or moving over a slope, then you want to know what is the uh, inclination. So, you can that get you can get that one using the inclinometer. Now, this information the theta and then uh, the inclination along with the position information that is the from the velocity information to integrate the moment to a position estimate, we will be able to get the complete pose of the robot the x y theta and the inclination can be obtained and that is we call as the dead reckoning of the uh, robot. So, normally this is used for in uh, ships and uh, other uh, uh, mobile uh, vehicles we uh, can use the position information from the velocity. So, you get the measure the velocity of the robot and integrate it to get the position and along with that you use the uh, heading uh, information to get the complete pose of the robot and we call that as the dead reckoning of the robot. So, this is what uh, commonly used in uh, mobile robotics for primary information. So, as I mentioned, uh, there will be a lot of errors when we use this for a, a long duration and that is why it cannot be always uh, uh, relied on 
but the primary information that you can get uh, is from the, these sensors, which will help us to get an approximate uh, uh, estimate of the pose of the robot. So, let us look at uh, some of these uh, uh, sensors, uh, heading sensors. So, one is the compass, which uh, most of you are familiar. Okay, it has actually, uh, it depends on the magnetic field and it is quite old. Uh, people have been using this uh, uh, magnetic field to identify the, the directions. So, we can always use this as a uh, uh, method to get the orientation. So, it actually gives an absolute measure for orientation. So, always uh, you know the magnetic field has got a particular direction and therefore, that will give you an absolute uh, direction whether it is north or east or uh, what is the direction which the robot moving can be obtained uh, as an absolute information. And uh, we have different methods to do this. We can actually use the mechanical magnetic components, uh, compo magne mechanical magnetic compass or you can directly measure the magnetic field using some other method like a Hall effect or magneto resistive uh, sensors etcetera. So, these are uh, additional methods. So, one is you directly use the mechanical uh, the, the compass which will actually depend on the earth magnetic field or we can actually use uh, something like a Hall effect sensor which actually uh, is a sensor which changes its uh, voltage or a potential uh, difference can be uh, measured with the variation in the magnetic field. So, that is basically the Hall effect sensors and similarly magneto resistive sensors where the resistance changes with because of the magnetic field. So, such sensors also can be used for getting the uh, uh, orientation based on the magnetic field. But there are many drawbacks to this because uh, the weakness of the earth field, earth field need not be always the same in different places. So, there may be variations and it will easily disturbed by magnetic objects or other sources. Suppose you have different uh, uh, source of magnetic field other than the earth's magnetic field that will actually uh, interfere with the measurement. Therefore, you may get a, a, a error in the measured value. And uh, many times may not be always feasible for indoor environments because of uh, uh, both the reasons. The magnetic field also may not be very strong and at the same time your uh, interference from other uh, sources also will be there. So, it has got its own limitation, but for again for basic information you can actually use this as a uh, sensor which will uh, provide uh, the orientation. So, the other one uh, which is commonly used as a gyroscope. So, gyroscope is something which uh, uh, which have been which has been there for a long time. Uh, most of the ships uh, use this uh, uh, gyroscope to get the orientation. So, the fundamental principle is that it keep the orientation to a fixed frame absolute measure for the heading of the mobile of a mobile system. So, uh, you can actually fix an axis based on uh, some uh, principle and then any changes from that can actually be easily measured. So, that is the basic principle of uh, uh, gyroscope. So, you keep the orientation to a, a fixed frame and then any changes in that orientation can actually be uh, measured. So, there are uh, two categories of the uh, gyroscope. So, one is the mechanical system, the other one is the optical uh, gyroscopes. So, both can be used for getting the heading information, but uh, uh, not only heading, you can actually even get the, the rate of change of heading also. So, that is where you can actually get something called a, a rated gyro. A rated gyro is which actually gives you the, the rate of change of orientation. So, orientation is more like a, a, a static value measured, but how fast it is changing or you can say it is an angular velocity also can be measured using gyroscope. So, you can have two types, one is the standard gyro, the other one is the rated gyro. Standard, standard gyro will give you the uh, orientation and the rated gyro will give you the rate of change of orientation. Uh, in mechanical optical uh, gyroscopes, you will get a uh, rated gyro. Uh, both, both categories, one is that you get, uh, get the orientation, the other one is the rate of change of orientation also can be obtained. In optical gyroscopes, we can use it for getting the uh, rate of change of orientation. We will look at uh, both and then see what is the difference and how they, what principle they use for getting the orientation as well as the rate of change of orientation. So, this shows the basic uh, uh, mechanical gyroscope. As you can see here, so there is a, a spinning wheel here. So, as you can see this wheel, this center wheel is actually spinning at a particular uh, uh, rate and it is actually along this axis. So, it has got an axis. Now, if this is uh, uh, rotating or spinning at a particular RPM, 
that that is basically the uh, it will be having some inertial properties and that properties are used to get the measurement okay so this uh, one this is rotating uh, i mean it's spinning and it will be having an inertia to change its axis of rotation and when any changes any change in uh, 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 orientation will actually be resisted by a torque and that no, torque is known as the their precision torque so it will be actually creating a precision torque which we call this i omega and omega so this i is the inertia of the wheel and then uh, precision speed is omega and uh, the small omega is the spinning speed the spinning speed is omega and then we get a precision precision speed of omega so if you can uh, get this uh, we, if we know the i and the omega then the the torque uh, will be proportional to the omega which is the precision so now you can see that the reactive torque is proportional to the spinning speed omega and the precision speed omega and the wheel's inertia i so no torque can be transmitted from the outer pivot to the wheel axis so you cannot transmit any torque from the outer pivot these are the pivots inner pivot and outer pivot so you have two pivots one is inner and the other one is outer so no torque can be transmitted from inner to outer and it will always remain the same axis whatever may be the rotation of this inner and outer pivot so now if you uh, uh, have a rotation of the inner or outer pivot this this axis will still remain the same whatever may be the original rotation axis and therefore if you connect this to a, a moving system and and rotating uh, system you will be able to find out the orientation by looking at the the changes in the uh, orientation of this axis with respect to the pivot so the pivot this uh, absolute uh, axis will remain the the direction of this axis will remain the same it will not change okay so the spinning axis will be always space stable so this will be a, a space stable the spinning axis will be always space stable and therefore you will be able to identify how much the uh, the system has moved or the whole uh, uh, robot has moved with respect to uh, uh, this uh, pivot by looking at the axis of the uh, uh, the spinning axis the, uh, the spinning axis will actually tell you what is the uh, change in the orientation that is basically the basic principle of uh, the gyroscope so the this one will be uh, rotating and uh, when it is rotating there will be a, a precision torque i omega uh, omega and then any uh, you won't be able to change the uh, position this axis whatever may be the changes in the inner or outer pivot so whatever may be the torque is acting on, on this one will not be transmitted to this and therefore this will always remain as the the axis will always uh, re remain space stable so that is the basic principle of uh, mechanical gyroscope so again there will be small errors in this one so the quality is around 0.1 degree in 6 hours so it is continuously rotating for 6 hours there may be small changes in the orientations but that uh, that can actually be uh, that is need to be compensated by some other means but otherwise for uh, uh, shorter durations you will be able to use this mechanical gyroscope to find out the uh, change in orientation so that is the basic principle of uh, mechanical gyroscope so this can actually be converted to a rate gyro so rate gyro is basically the rate at which it is changing so the, the conventional one will give you only the change in position but the rate at which it is moving uh, can be also obtained by making some basic arrangement uh, with mechanical gyros so you can actually restrain these gimbals by torsional spring and then we can actually get the angular speed instead of the orientation so the torsional spring if you rest, uh, restrain then the how much the the string is actually getting uh, extended that actually gives you an, a, a rate of change of the orientation or the angular speed can actually be uh, measured using that kind of an arrangement so you connect this to uh, restrain it by a torsional spring and then you can measure the the spring extension uh, that will give you a, a value of the orientation the angular speed or some cases you can use coriolis forces also to measure uh, this uh, uh, changes in heading okay so these are the ways in which we can actually use the mechanical gyros to get the orientation or the rate of change of orientation most of the uh, uh, robots nowadays don't use mechanical gyros because of the difficulty in maintaining the mechanical gyros in a, a mobile robots they were primarily used for uh, big vehicles or uh, ships and other uh, 
uh, bigger uh, vehicles. But nowadays, uh, not many uh, mechanical gyros are used uh, uh, in the uh, robots. Category is the optical gyroscope. Uh, as I mentioned, optical gyroscopes are used for uh, measuring the rate of uh, change of orientation. So, the principle is uh, simple here. So, you have a, a light source, a light source is actually passing through a ring. So, you can see the, the there is a ring, and then there will be a, a one uh, light will be passing in one direction, another one will, will be passing in another direction. There will be uh, two uh, light beams traveling in opposite directions and then they will come and received at the both at the receiver. Now, if the this ring is uh, stationary, then both will be traveling at the uh, uh, they will be traveling the same distance and then it will be reaching at the receiver without any uh, phase difference. If this ring is uh, rotating, then because of the uh, rotation of this ring, there will be a small change in the phase between these the two received signal. So, that can actually be used to measure the speed of rotation of the ring. So, that is the basic principle of uh, optical gyroscope. Okay. So, so, the angular speed using two monochromatic light source okay, beam from the same source. Then one is traveling in uh, clockwise, the other one is in the anti-clockwise direction around the cylinder and then a being traveling in direction of rotation of the cylinder will be slightly shorter paths, shows a higher frequency. And the difference in frequency delta f of the two beams is proportional to the angular velocity omega of the cylinder. So, the this can be used for the uh, measurement of the uh, cylinder velocity. So, that is basically if the cylinder is rotating, you will be able to find out the velocity of the cylinder using the, the change in frequency. The delta f will be the, the change in frequency can actually be measured and that uh, basically uh, gives you the rate at which the cylinder is rotating. So, that is basically known as the that is the basic principle of optical gyroscope. <coughs> so, nowadays so you do not need to have such a big uh, setup, you can actually use uh, simple uh, uh, solid state uh, systems to get the optical gyroscopes uh, uh, assembled. So, it can be very small uh, size, you do not need to have very big uh, uh, size uh, for the cylinder and other thing. Uh, you can have very small MEMS based uh, uh, optical gyroscopes for getting the uh, rate of change of uh, orientation. That is uh, uh, one way of uh, measuring the uh, heading rate of change of heading. Okay, so, uh, as I mentioned the mechanical gyroscopes are uh, uh, big and uh, difficult to uh, use and therefore, now we have the MEMS based gyroscopes that is micro electromechanical system gyroscopes. The, the principle of uh, mechanical, uh, uh, sorry, the MEMS gyroscope is based on the measurement of the Coriolis force or the, the effect of Coriolis force. So, assume that a, a mass M is actually moving in the direction V, in the in moving in the, this direction with a velocity V and it is rotating with an angular velocity omega with respect to the z axis. Then there will be a force, the Coriolis force will be acting in this direction. So, this is the basic principle of uh, uh, Coriolis force. So, it is moving in one direction and then trying to having a rotation uh, with respect to a normal direction, then you will be having a Coriolis force acting in this direction. So, that is the basic principle. Somehow, if we can actually uh, measure this uh, uh, force or the effect of this force, then we will be able to know what is omega because we know uh, this V and therefore, this course is this is proportional to the V and omega and therefore, we will be able to get what is this omega uh, if we can measure the Coriolis force or the effect of Coriolis force at the displacement of the mass because of the Coriolis force. So, that is the basic principle of uh, MEMS gyroscope. Okay, so, when a mass is moving in a direction V and uh, angular rotation velocity omega is applied, then the mass will experience a force in the direction of the arrow as a result of the Coriolis force. Okay, the, res the resulting physical displacement caused by the Coriolis force is then read from a capacitive sensing structure. So, you can have a, a, a me method to measure the displacement using some capacitive measurement or something like that and that can be used to uh, identify what is the value of omega or what is the rate at which it is rotating. So, that is basically the uh, principle of uh, MEMS gyroscope. 
Okay, so uh, it is difficult to uh, have a, a mass moving like this in a, in a sensor and therefore, we use a, a tuning for configuration to design the MEMS gyroscope. The principle is this one, but the, the actual design is based on a tuning for configuration. So, what is it? So, we will have two masses M as you can see here, they are separated using a uh, connected using a spring and then they will be vibrating as if it is trying to move in this direction. Okay, So, both are trying to move in the opposite direction and then the whole system is having a angular velocity omega like this and then it will be experiencing a Coriolis force, both the mass will be experiencing Coriolis force and now you measure the displacement of this mass using some other method and that will be a measure of omega. So, that is the basic principle of uh, a MEMS based uh, uh, the with the tuning for configuration MEMS based uh, uh, gyroscopes. So, when angular velocity is applied the Coriolis force on each mass also acts on opposite direction which results in capacitance change and this capacitance change is a, a measure of the angular velocity. So, you will be able to get the angular velocity of the system based on the measurement of the capacitance change. So, that way you will be able to get the rate of change of uh, uh, velocity, the rate of change of angular uh, orientation uh, using this sensor. Okay, so, the differential value in capacitance is proportional to the angular velocity omega and is then converted into an output voltage. That is what actually happens in the uh, sensor. So, the, the uh, gyroscopes are very small uh, chips. So, you can actually you will get able to get it in a very small chip and uh, use it for uh, use it in your uh, system to get the angular velocity. Okay, so, we will uh, discuss this in the next class, uh, uh, accelerometers and other kind of sensors will be uh, discussed in the next class. Thank you.